The historic Governor's Mansion was built in 1904. From the years 1905 through 1976, it was the residence of 19 Wyoming First Families. Today, visitors can enjoy holiday tours through the historic Governor's Mansion. Christina Bird is the superintendent of the Wyoming Historic Governor's Mansion State Historic Site. Join her in a step back through time with old-fashioned holiday traditions and historic decorations. The mansion was finished by December of 1904, and our first first family were the Brooks family. They moved in in January of 1905. At the end of that month, they threw open the doors for 300 of their closest friends. It's kind of an open house to show off the new residence. And so they had an orchestra. They had decorated the home with some of the boughs, like in the entryway when you came in. And carnations were the big flower at that time. And so that's why as you go through the house, you see red carnations everywhere. They decorated the home with red carnations for that party. This is our Tinsel Through Time exhibit. It is an exhibit of historically accurate decorated Christmas trees from the 1890s all the way up until the 1960s. We partner with local museums over the last couple years to do a secondary exhibit. Uh, this year's theme is Presents Under the Tree. During the Victorian period, right around statehood here in Wyoming, it was a time of excess in everything from wallpaper to furnishings to your Christmas trees. And so Christmas trees traditionally in America during that time period did have a floor to ceiling sort of look to them. And they were covered with everything and anything imaginable, including popcorn garland, paper garland, cranberry garland, ornaments flowers, candy, cookies, animal crackers were originally invented around the turn of the century and so animal crackers became a great thing to hang off of your Christmas tree. And so really anything you can think of on a Christmas tree would end up on a Christmas tree. They also had, because electric lighting was not very common around the turn of the century, they did candle lighting on the Christmas trees. So let's go into our dining room. Our dining room Christmas trees cover everything from 1900 all the way up until 1950s. So our 1900 tree you can see is the one with the candles on it. Our 1920s tree is uh, covered with lead tinsel. Lead tinsel was a very common product used on your Christmas tree all the way up until the 1960s. Reused year after year, you can tell it hangs so much differently than the one next to it, which has the PVC tinsel on it. Our table is set for 10. It is set with one of the tablecloths that belong to the Barrett, Governor Barrett. A 1930s Christmas tree was usually covered head to toe with tinsel. Very popular way to decorate your holiday tree in the 1930s. In the 1920s and 30s is really when ornaments became really commonly used on your Christmas trees. We do have some of the gifts in our boxes. We do have a pair of gloves, a couple of purses. We have a toy telephone. So now that kids are using toy cell phones, they think there are all that in a bag of chips. But it was pretty common to have toys, regular appliances all through, all through the history. This is our den, our governor's den. This is our 1950s den. And in the 1950s, aluminum trees were quite the hot product. Every good aluminum tree usually had a color wheel that went in front of it that would display the different colors. These are paper dolls and toys from the 1920s. Paper dolls were commonly also found in newspapers, and children would clip them out of the newspapers, put some cardstock or cardboard on the back of them, and they were able to be used as well. So this is our World War II tree. During the 1940s, ornament manufacturers had a hard time getting the silvering agents and the aluminum caps for your Christmas tree ornaments. And so they actually make glass bulbs with paper caps on them. So if you get really close, you can see all of these ornaments have paper caps on them. So our children's room is turn of the century, 1905. We call it our Santa room because it's filled with Santa. And common gifts around the turn of the century for children, view masters. An early version was called a stereoscope. Dollhouse toys, dollhouses, coarse clothing. This is my favorite time of year. It takes us two months to do. We do 29 Christmas trees throughout the house. We have a huge collection of antique Christmas ornaments, which we use on our Christmas trees every year. We have about 15 volunteers who help us put together the holiday decorations, but it's a nice way to celebrate the holidays. So we have our flock tree. This is our bird flock tree. During the 1960s, Mrs. Bobby Hathaway always had a flock tree on the second floor. 
and it was always decorated with bird ornaments. Our peach bedroom is done to the 1920s. And in the 1920s, very commonly, gifts given were appliances, friendly irons, always a hot item, small purses, things like that. We do have a pair of ballet shoes, which would have been more specific for it. Still very, very hard to come by in the 1920s. And then our green bedroom to your left, that's our master bedroom. Very commonly during the Edwardian period in the early 1900s, they went to a simpler way of decorating although still an awful lot of stuff on the Christmas tree. They were called white trees, and so a lot of families would take their Christmas ornaments and they would scrub off all of the color, and then they could create their own white tree. That painting is really unusual. That is a William Du Bois. William Du Bois became a very famous local architect here in town. William Du Bois was one of the original bidders to build the historic governor's mansion in 1903. And in 1903, it was common for architects to sometimes do prospectus paintings of what the final structure would look like. And so even though he was the unsuccessful bidder on the project, somebody found his prospectus painting and donated it to the Historic Governor's Mansion. So if you look really closely, you can tell it's not the Historic Governor's Mansion as it sits today, but not that off what the building became. The successful bidder was a architect out of Omaha, Nebraska, by the name of Charles Murdoch. This is our sunroom. The only living Christmas tree in the house is that one right there. It is covered with bubble lights, and bubble lights were a very common way of lighting your Christmas tree in the 1950s. By the 1950s, the Shiny Bright Ornament Company was in full swing, and they were making far more ornaments than any other manufacturer in the world. Cardboard fireplaces were fairly common in homes, especially in cities that didn't have fireplaces. You know, in apartment buildings and stuff where you didn't necessarily have a fireplace in every single apartment. So a lot of families would buy cardboard fireplaces for the holidays. We do have featured some of the Christmas cards from the governors and their families, of which were sent out every year. That one's my favorite, the one in the Hagen family. It's a family picture taken in the drawing room, which is downstairs in front of the fireplace. And you can see the aluminum tree in the background. This is our 1960s bedroom. This is once the bedroom of Hathaway Daughters. Decorations became hugely popular in the 1960s. And so even if you were to purchase uh, Christmas ornaments, a lot of times you would purchase the satin Christmas ornaments and then you would add your own decorations to those. That bikini is one of my favorites in the house. It's a two-piece. In our attic space, everybody I think in their house has some space where they are so done with Christmas decorating that all of that stuff just gets shoved to the side. And so in our attic, of course, you end up with some of the historic lighting, which we don't use in the house anymore and some gifts as though you were planning to wrap them for later.